We're living it up, palm trees with sea breeze. We're living it up, no clouds with blue seas. We're on a jet ski, living this life. Tropical island, paradise. We're living it up, palm trees with sea breeze. Nothing I say is financial advice and shouldn't be constituted as financial advice. I'm a grown ass man in the Spider Man mask who gives you fire crypto information again none of this is financial advice make your own decisions what is up everybody i am mr man welcome back to my channel um i don't have too much to say today but i do have a video i want you guys all to watch and we'll watch it together but before that i want to just go over this quick report q3 report by ripple which came out two days ago on the 31st of october during Halloween when everybody was out there dressed up trick-or-treating I was at home chilling in my mask no, I wasn't doing any of that I was at home just hanging out with my daughter-in-law son-in-law just chilling anyways Q3 2023 XRP markets report I'm not gonna read the whole thing I'm gonna read literally a subsection of it as an XRP holder Ripple believes proactive communication and transparency are part of being a responsible stakeholder. Moreover, Ripple urges others in the industry to build trust, foster open communication, and raise the bar industry-wide. If these were, if these individuals, in, individuals were crooks, as some people state, and they were dumping on us, as some people state, why would they be so transparent in their actions? You may not understand certain things, but understand that you don't have to understand everything for it to make sense. Eventually and inevitably it will make sense, but right now it doesn't have to make sense to you. So, let us jump into the video. All right, so this is an older video from 2018, and I've done all the watching. These are the things I like to watch that most people don't like to watch, but believe me, you're gonna wanna see this one here. Listen to what they say very, very carefully. People out there in the Twitterverse, people out there, out in the world, have parroted, parroted and stated that no banks are using XRP zero banks are using XRP I will let these this banker here from Istanbul give you the game about the banks that don't use XRP right don't take it from me I can tell you that they're using it all day long you don't have to believe a word I say I'll let them speak and all you gotta do is listen here we go from Akbank's point of view um, what we are doing as one of the most valuable banks and largest banks in Turkey, we strictly focused on cutting, cutting what is not necessary and focusing on what is truly necessary. And obviously blockchain comes out as one of the key enablers of that, right? Because blockchain at the end is, 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 is a trust chain and if we need blockchain is a question of what is the cost of trust in our daily business and in banking and financial services, cost of trust is pretty high. To assure the trust is a pretty costly thing. Taking starting from KYC to AML and everything you can imagine in transfers. And one critical area that is uh, creating unfair charges and costs is obviously was international fund transfers. And nobody can explain truly why this is happening, why they are so costly and so miserable in shape, because it's taking sometimes a couple of days to send the money. Nobody knows where your money is, unless you really dig in and understand. Uh, nobody even can commit to the cost before you do, do the transfer. It's, it's just so miserable, the whole thing. Uh, and Ripple, as a great uh, partner in that, came up with this technology, so we said, why not? Uh, we, we need to definitely look into that because it's a great opportunity for a bank like Akbank where we have lots of commercial clients who are dealing with international trade, who needs to send money, receive money, and have this relation. It works, yes. So, hello everybody, and sorry for this delay. Uh, my name is Marjan Delatine. I'm 
joined Ripple actually um, 10 months ago and I used to work for Swift for more than a decade. And my last assignment was, uh, I was responsible for GPI, that I'm sure you have heard about it. Uh, changing the cross-border or transaction banking systems. Now coming back to Ripple, because I joined Ripple to disrupt. And I think that's, that's the main uh, objective of the Ripple. Uh, Ripple is a blockchain company. Um, uh, the vision of the Ripple is to create um, an ecosystem uh, with a, a mission that we have, which is creating an internet of value. So when we look at the current landscape of uh, exchanging data, which is happening over internet in a matter of seconds, payment still is going through a long-term cycle, uh, three to five days for a simple uh, cross-border transaction. So our vision, or the Ripple vision, is really uh, making the payment, the transfer of the cross-border, as smooth as possible than the exchange of the data today uh, over internet. That's in a nutshell what we are doing. Yeah, I think it's, very, it's a very good question, by the way, because there are lots of confusion uh, about uh, how these different elements get together in a, in a kind of business model. So let's put it very simple. Uh, Ripple is, a, as I mentioned, this is a company, okay? XRP is a native asset that was even created before Ripple, and it was gifted to the Ripple to, for the cross-border payment. So XRP was really, uh, the, 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 the design of the XRP was to ensure that uh, this could be used as a liquidity management tool uh, in order to make cross-border transactions. Okay. Now a bit about the history of Ripple. Ripple started uh, in 2012, and um, the first product was really using the digital asset, which is the XRP, uh, with the consensus uh, um, protocol. But this was not, the banks were not yet ready to really embrace this because this, is, this was a big shift for a bank uh, that it is uh, uh, highly dependent on the regulation to take an asset that it is not even a possible part to be part of the balance sheet. As a result of that, um, Ripple has created a new product um, which is called Interledger Protocol. Um, and this Interledger Protocol is basically exchanging um, value uh, based on a fiat currencies. So when we are talking now about Ripple and the banks that probably you hear, you hear about them, the adoption is no longer really using digital assets. It's using... So we're here listening to her talk and she goes and drops the name Interledger, right? Or ILP. I want to show you guys this, all right? As we're talking about Interledger now, which is a Ripple product as well, as she stated, given to the I, was it the 3CW, the Worldwide Consortium. So, the European, I'm going to show you guys this here. I want you to know that I'm not full of crap. I do my homework. ETSI, in 2022, permission distributed ledger, interledger interoperability. Okay. This is where I want to go. The European Interoperability Framework from the European Commission had the first version adopted in 2010 between the new EU policies in the field of information technology with strong focus on openness and information management, data portability, interoperability, governance, and integrated service delivery. Furthermore, National Interoperability Framework Observatory, NIFO, produced a variety of documents with recommendations for policymakers, researchers, and business stakeholders with the latest development on digital government and interoperability across Europe. On the other hand, the European Blockchain Services Infrastructure, IBSI, is officially established with which interledger interoperability will be a key ingredient. Right? I don't think you guys heard me. I don't think you heard me. Y'all here come to church to clap and sing. Let's get this let's get this thing going, okay? On the other hand, the European Blockchain Services is officially established. This paper is 2022. So Europe has been officially established since 2022 with Ripple with Interledger 
It will be a key ingredient for scalable business and connecting networks for cross-border communication. Actually, four use cases are applying on the top of EBSI, and one of them is related to trust data sharing, which is a, which is a value for considering interoperability as a priority within the deployment of the European digital single market. So let's look at some of these lies here. These came out in August 2022. We had gone through this already now. All right, let's go through it again. This came out in when? 2022, August 2022. Then you have these lies out here saying, oh, the BOE and Ripple explore synchronized settlements. No, 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 no. They explored that already years ago. They had integrated back here. They had integrated, meaning they had explored already. Nice try. So that's how it works. The Bank of England and Ripple have completed a proof of concept study. Okay. At the coordinated movement of two distinct currencies and two distinct simulated real-time growth settlement systems. Nah. Nah, B. They've already done that. They've already done that. You got me twisted. You think I'm? You must think I'm stupid. You must think I'm loco, SA. No, no, no. That's not how this is rolling. They lying out of their teeth. Look at that. Look at the date. Look at the date. I just read to you and showed you that they had integrated by 2022. By. Because this document in 2022 says they are already integrated. All right. Let's get back to hear what she has to say. Cross-border cross fiat currencies and exchanging values in an instant payment basis. Um, we do have, of course, other products, uh, and we see this take up now, especially with the payment providers, uh, because obviously they are uh, shorter in terms of the, let's say, capital, uh, and the cost of still um, settling uh, cross-border is very expensive. So they use the XRP or our native digital assets as a bridge currency to diminish actually the, access, the, the cost of the cross-border. But the banks today, they use Ripple for fiat currencies. That I think is very important to, uh, to, to understand. Okay, thank you. So there's a cooperation between two brands, Ripple and Bank. So you need global remittances and I think that part Ripple is coming to the game. So what are you cooperating about? So what does that mean for Bank? Um, actually, as I said, uh, we are keen on in looking in, into areas where there is too much inefficiency and cost of trust is too much. So, so Ripple came up as a technology company to solve for that, right? And uh, this is our kind of way of differentiating ourselves against our local competitors or bringing our customers in Turkey some better ways of serving them faster, cheaper, easier, you know, more transparent. So uh, th that relationship popped up uh, as part of that. Ripple already is, uh, had started. Our experience is like almost one year old now. Uh, we have uh, started making transfers between our entity in Germany and Turkey. And now we are adding additional banks and talking to them and uh, moving to the... We are finding actually that make it faster for them. What, what are the we worked on this with regulation in Turkey and they were very open-minded, honestly. With that, uh, it took us a couple meetings to discuss the technology and the means behind it. Uh, what Marjan has said was very important in that discussions. This is not leveraging XRP as a currency. That's a very different thing. Uh, so this is not about crypto assets or cryptocurrency. It's the technology. Did you hear that? What they're doing, as he said, is this is not leveraging XRP as a currency. They can leverage it as a currency as well. Right? Did you hear her say, him say that? All right, I want to show you guys this now. Just a segue quickly. So you heard how easy it is to utilize XRP to go from this to this. This currency swap in the middle here to this currency here. I want to take you through some of the lies that are told as well. Listen to this, okay? Same woman. She works at Ripple still, I believe. I haven't really checked up on that, but check it out. This isn't a lie. This is how easy it is, okay? Oh, Euro to Philippines. 
but really um, taking the dispute technology progressively into the world uh, that the financial institution can make a change uh, without to the world. But we instance, it's not necessarily using crypto assets, it's fiat currency. So sending, for instance, uh, USD to Mexico, Euro to Philippines, but really uh, taking the dispute technology. So it's that easy for them, okay? That's how easy it is. Now listen to this. This guy here is from MoneyGram. Do you think Ripple can make a comeback? MoneyGram CEO weighs in. Let's hear what he has to say, okay? I'm gonna pause my mic here. Do you think Ripple could make a comeback? There's a lot of FX volatility in that stuff. Um, that's probably the single biggest challenge that we had, um, you know, using that was we were trying to look at cross-border um, use cases and you go from, you know, US dollar to a peso like we do today, you gotta buy pesos, you have to play pesos into the market. There's an FX cost to that. Well, you think when you go into the crypto world, you could eliminate the FX cost. The reality is you can't because that, that, that coin's moving around in value. So it didn't really solve for anything and actually it added a, a third element because you now you're going a dollar to a currency to another currency. So now you're doing like two foreign exchange trades instead of one. So it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. So so you heard that from a dollar to a currency to another currency it's a currency that's twice we heard it there from this guy too but he's saying it didn't make a lot of sense to him really but yet meanwhile ripple described it as extremely easy so did the the ceo at the, the ceo whoever he was there at the bank uh, of istanbul in turkey that's because it's uh, it's basically consensus based network so you don't necessarily in a closed network you don't, you don't need a crypto asset in, in between to be traded across so when we explained this to the local regulator local regulator was uh, very much understanding this and so it was uh, it was very very well passing through what are the benefits from a customer -wise? from customers point of view it's, it's very easy I don't know I mean many people here should have done an international money transfer in their lives uh, First of all, speed is less than eight seconds today. It's like less than eight seconds is pretty much this. So you send the money from here to that point in eight, eight seconds is, is great compared to what is today can, can go up to four or five days if you send money uh, to one other location in, in, in the globe. Uh, the cost, pretty much uh, the cost is, uh, uh, there's very little about network cost, uh, almost nothing. Uh, the, the cost is far less uh, in reality and that will be reflected to the customer. And I think where is my money is not anymore a question because in most cases, uh, especially large businesses are sending money overseas, they are trying to track the money, recipient is trying to say where is the money, is it coming, it's not coming, where is it, you know, there's lots of intermediaries in between that is adding to the cost and traceability of the problems to the traceability of the event. SWIFT uh, has been a great organization to solve for that in the past, but I think that's like, um, they're kind of behind now uh, on, this, on this story, clearly. I see, so. Just to make that clear, Margin here used to work at SWIFT. She left SWIFT to go to Ripple to do what? Disrupt. Her words, not mine. I'm just reiterating, reiterating what she had say, stated. Customers, as you would like to mention, sir, uh, who are your customers? What's your customer base, and where is that going in that manner? Well, actually, we have more than 100 banks who have joined 100 financial institutions, but majorly, I should say, 90% uh, are banks, and we do have uh, now a uh, payment service provider as well joining um, the network. So they are worldwide uh, because, at the end, this is about trades and this is about uh, cross border transactions. <laughs> Um, we see a lot of tra uh, traction, of course, in uh, EMEA, uh, uh, in Europe in general, I should say, um, and uh, in APAC. Uh, but it's always based on a use case, and I think that was also the scope. Notice she brought up Europe. We had gone through Europe already with Interledger and discovered or determined that Interledger had integrated with Bank of England not the Bank of England, but Europe, the European EBSI, European something 
whatever. Those people, they integrated with those people back in 2017. And then we had fast forward to 2023 in August, all these articles coming out saying the Bank of England's looking to explore to go and do this. They're not exploring, they'd already had it done. Now they're just writing the papers from their exploration back in the day to come and say, hey, we're doing, this. nice try, nice try. We got your number already, we know what you're doing. We see you, all right? I'm gonna come to a close in a minute here. I just want you to watch the last couple minutes here and then we'll end off. Scope of the collaboration that we established with, with Akbank is uh, what a bank wants to achieve actually um, out of this technology because blockchain is a technology only um, and uh, this is not changing the customer experience alone it's going to be at the service of the bank uh, and the vision of the bank how they want to use this technology so I think that um, has been a very important discussion with, with Akbank and the vision of Akbank in terms of um, what, how they want to really move forward the digital roadmap so you have this discussion with large banks such as Santander, um, Standard Chartered, um, and also some other banks that probably I, I cannot mention the names. Uh, but clearly, 2017 for us was um, moving to production. So we are no longer talking about uh, proof of concept or uh, piloting. Uh, our um, network is live, um, and we are exchanging uh, uh, transaction with the value of uh, close to 1 billion USD. So I think that's... So you heard Marjan talking about Santander. That conference you were listening to was in 2018. This article here, PDF, not article, PDF was from 2018 here. The big story of Q4 2017, and I emphasize that Q4 2017, Ripple is one of the most talked about phenomena in the cryptocurrency world and its profile reached new heights in Q4 2017, both because its own conference um, in the same place in the same time as that of SWIFT, same place, the organization Ripple aims to take down its own PR machine and the price of its XRP currency rising from 25 cents on the 10th of October to 225 at the end of the year. Let's see why. Because XRP is a commodity, back in 2017 and not a form of money the monetary authorities take no position on it because xrp is not listed on a regulated stock exchange xrp is able to talk about it ripple is able to talk about it and deal in it in a way that is beyond the scope of investment regulators people part with real money in a fiat currency to acquire xrp but xrp cannot be spent in shops it is not legal tender as such Ripple or XRP and Ripple float in the ether, but not the Ethereum. Ha, huh. good one. Hi, okay. So the Santander UK trial with Ripple was banal and involved Santander extracting Swift's MT0103 messaging, which is the old messaging, not the ISO 20022 rich data messaging from their core system and rerouting them into Ripple's and not Santander's gateway. So, it went from Santander, normally it goes from Santander into Swift and then to wherever else it goes. But this time it bypassed Swift. It went from Santander into Ripple or XRPL, X through XRP, and then to wherever it was going. At the end, at the other end of Santander's corresponding respondent extracted the message from Ripple but put it into its MT103 pro processing flow, debited Santander's USD account in its books, and sent that payment through the Fedwire system. The Fedwire system, through all banks in the US, must be directly or indir indir indirectly reachable. The Fedwire system. Let me show you this here, okay? Boom! That's not it. Let me get back to my boom. Boom! There we go. This is it. So, Q4. Let's see. Q4. Boom! October. <laughs> Look at this. Because that was using live XRP. October, November, December. Boom! Shoots up to 228. Just like that. Because it was being utilized. 
So while these banks are doing proof of concepts, proof of concepts right now, which they've already accomplished since way before 2017, all right, they've done it back here. They've done their POCs back here. And then Santander did one, and bam, right through the Fedwire system, shot up to 228. Wait till this goes live. Mika goes live. Markets and crypto assets goes live December 30th, 2024. Jamie Diamond is dumping millions of his a million shares of his own company this Q1 2024. At the end of 2024, we'll have stablecoin regulations in the UK. The UK is the leader in terms of banking industry. They are the leader. What the UK does, the world does. Until next time, I'll see you guys. Much love and respect. We're living it up, palm trees with sea breeze.